Hello everybody, my name is Ellen Roma. I'm Professor of Market Research and International Marketing at Hochschule Ruhr West in Mülheim an der Ruhr in the western part of the Ruhr area and western part of Germany. Today we are going to talk about customer experience management and the customer journey in particular. Before we start, however, I would like to give you a short overview of our learning outcomes. So by the end of this e-lecture, you will be able to describe the roots of customer experience, where it's all coming from. Then you're going to define very important notions relating to customer experience. After that, we are going to explain the customer journey as a model with several touch points. And of course, we will also give you a practical example and you should also be able to apply that model to your own practical example in the end. Finally, we will also look at how the customer experience is managed from the company side because of course companies are interested in managing the customer experiences and we will look at the challenges. So this is all that you should be able to know and able to do at the end of this e-lecture. So these different learning outcomes, they are actually behind these different sections that you can see here. In the first part, we are talking about the customer experience, its roots, its definitions in marketing theory and practice. In the second part, we will talk more about a practical example. We will show you different stages in the customer journey relating to a practical example. In the end, in the third section, we will look at customer experience management from the company's side because the companies have the intention to manage customer experiences. So let's start with the first section. First of all, we talk about the roots of customer experience and here you can see a timeline and it's starting in the 1960s. So in the 1960s, marketing academics and practitioners started to think about the different phases, different customer behavior process models were developed and you can see here a small symbol below, meaning that there are different stages of the customer purchase and process. And uh, for example, starting from need recognition, search of information, evaluation of alternatives, purchase and other post-purchase behavior being also part of these different phases. Now let's look at the next decade at the 1970s. At that age, customer loyalty and customer satisfaction became more and more important uh, to the companies. So what academics did is to develop models measuring customer satisfaction, measuring customer loyalty, so that uh, the companies were able to manage these aspects. In the customer satisfaction section, for example, we, we had the confirmation, disconfirmation paradigm, which is also called the CD paradigm, which means that a customer has expectations about a product or a service. And as soon as he has consumed that product or used that product, he makes experiences cons confirming the expectations or disconfirming the expectation. So if an expectation is confirmed, we have satisfaction, of course. If it's disconfirmed, we have dissatisfaction. And that is what it's all about. However, measuring it for the companies is still nowadays very important. Of course, you want to keep those customers. So that customer loyalty has also become important at that age. In the next phase, we have service quality and the management of service quality. Companies and also academics realize that not only products are important, but also the services accompanying those products are important, or also the service as themselves, because services are intangible in comparison to products, and they have to do with people. So there's also always interaction between people so that the quality of this interaction became very important. 
Academics also invented a new model here, which is the surf call model, putting together service and quality. And they have different aspects how to measure the quality of the service. So this is in the 1980s that this was more and more important. Still nowadays, of course, however, that was very yeah, um, topical at that age. In the 1990s, relationship management became more important. First of all, developing in the B2B, in the business to business area, which means when companies are interacting with each other, we have suppliers, we have customers, and we have, of course, important people interacting there. And uh, with relationship and relationship management, trust and commitment became more and more important because the partners had to trust on themselves and they also sometimes had to commit, they had to invest in those relationships in order to keep them going. In the 2000s, customer relationship management became more and more important and with that, the monetization of the customer. So customer value was really in the center of everything, measuring that, and we had concepts like customer lifetime value assessment here, where the companies try to assess the value of each customer and actually also derive implications from these values. With that, also the customer focus and the customer centricity became a topic here because companies were putting the individual customer at the center of all activities. Now let's come to the end of this arrow, which is in the 2010, which is customer engagement becoming more and more important. The interaction of the individual customer with the company, the engagement and participation of the customer in the value creation process became more and more important. And that is uh, still nowadays where customers are providing feedback to companies, are doing customer referrals on social media and so on, where the customer engages him or herself for the company. So this is the end of that arrow. However, there's also one other development that I would like to, be, uh, to mention now, which is the digitalization or the upcoming of the internet in the 1990s, the upcoming of new hardware, for example, the iPhone in the 2000s, and also the upcoming of new software trying to manage customer relationships from the company's perspective. So nowadays you have really powerful tools for companies to manage all their customers, or you also know that you have different apps where you can interact uh, with other customers, where you can interact with the companies on Instagram, for example. So this is all natural nowadays, but with this development of technology, all these new trends are possible, of course. Now, where is customer experience in that picture? You can't see it really here because it's hidden behind all these aspects that we have been talking about. It is hidden behind the customer purchasing process. It is hidden behind customer satisfaction. But before continuing, I would like to give you some definitions about all these different aspects and especially about customer experience. Now let's look at the definitions. What is customer experience? It is a customer's cognitive mean thinking, emotional, meaning feeling, behavioral, meaning acting, sensorial, meaning yeah, sensing with all the senses like eyes, ears, nose, fingers, and so on, and also social responses to a firm's offerings, which means um, the company's products and service, services offered to the customer, and the customer's entire purchasing journey. Here you can also see the customer experience is not static, it's very dynamic going through different phases in what we will see the customer journey later. However, there's also an important definition about touch points because the contacts between the company and the customer is called a touch point. I give you a definition here, it's the individual contacts between firm and customer at different points in the experience or different points we can say in the customer journey. 
So the customer journey is putting that all together now. It's the experiences of a customer at multiple touch points. There are several touch points usually between the company and the customer in the course of time. So it's dynamic, as I said, moving from need recognition, search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase to consumption or usage, engagement, as we saw it before, and post-purchase behaviors. This is all very theoretical, but we want to give you now a full model where you can really understand what the customer journey, what the touch points are, and where the customer experience is happening. Here's the model. So on the left-hand side, you can see all the different channels. We have some online channels. However, we also have some offline channels. Channels, we mean we have sales channels, but also media channels. For example, we have the internet like search engines, we have websites, social media or email. However, we also have offline channels like telephone, flyers, catalogs, TV and radio. We have stores, we have out of home advertising like billboards, we have print and also communication to other people, for example, friends. On the top, you can see the different phases. I don't want to go through all of them. We have pre-purchase stages, we have purchase stages and post-purchase stages. And we will take now one example and we'll take you through all that customer journey. We thought about one example that we can give to you, which is also quite complex, so that we can have a very detailed picture of the customer journey. However, I would like to mention that not every customer journey is that complex as we are showing it here, but we thought we will give you a full example here that you really can understand what the customer journey is like. So let's start the customer journey and think of somebody who is reading an advertisement on the newspaper, for example, about e-bikes which are electric bikes and uh, looking in that newspaper, what that person is doing next is going, for example, on Instagram and looking on some articles about the environmental movement, about CO2 emissions, CO2 reductions. And then he or she has the idea, hmm, maybe that's an idea to buy an e-bike. What this person then does next is to go to a search engine on the internet. Maybe you go onto Google, other platforms where you gather or collect your first information about e-bikes. Soon you realize that it's really complicated and you start to talk to friends who have already some experiences with e-bikes so that you get more information. What is important when I buy an e-bike? What are the criteria that are really important to me? In the next stage, you think, hmm, that's still very, very confusing what I'm seeing here. Let's go to the local retailer and like, look what he or she has to say in order that I can make up my mind when buying an e-bike. After you've visited that retailer in the store, you go back onto the internet, you look at different websites from other retailers or manufacturers, you look at different testing websites where um, there are some tests uh, about e-bikes where you can see the results and compare the different models. In the end, however, you think, hmm, I go back to that local retailer because he or she was really good in helping me to decide and you buy the e-bike in that shop. After that, when you've bought your e-bike, you're really proud and of course you present it on Instagram, showing it, it to your friends and getting some reactions from your friends. After all, you can uh, go then back to the retailer, for example, if you're having some problems with the e-bike or for example, when you have some software updates that need to be put onto the bike in order to make it and keep it running as you want it. So now you have a good idea of what a customer journey may look like with the different touch points that you can see here, which are the contacts between the firm and the customer. And of course, this is very complex, uh, but it gives you a good idea what it may look like. Now let's come to the second part. 
And in that second part, we want to give you that practical example and show you what that person we were talking about is really going through, what ideas she or he has, what interactions are there in order to know in the end how to manage the customer experience.